I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyanasundaram. Continuing the bedside teaching videos that I had mentioned. So in the first video we had looked at the fluid balance and how we start with the fluids. In this video I will look at insensible water loss and uh, how do we estimate insensible water loss. So insensible water loss is where we have water loss which we can't directly measure. The main sources of insensible water loss is from the skin and from the respiratory tract. So 60% of the insensible water loss is from the skin and 30% uh, uh, to 40% is from the respiratory tract. Of course, in a baby who has respiratory distress uh, and is breathing fast, this insensible water loss is more. If you are breathing uh, gas which is not humidified, your insensible water loss is going to be more. And uh, the skin losses are going to be more in a premature baby who has lack of uh, skin integrity or has a very thin skin which is having uh, vessels close to the surface and so the baby loses the water vapor from the skin. So insensible water loss depends on the sickness status of the baby as well as the gestation. So the more premature the baby the higher the insensible water loss mainly from the skin. The measurable losses are obviously from the urine and from the secretions which you may be aspirating as well as from the uh, stool losses. So usually the stool losses are not significant unless the baby has increased frequency of stools which are larger in quantity. So mostly the urine output is the main measure and of course you monitor the fluid balance as we discussed in the previous video. If the increased insensible water loss is from the respiratory tract as it happens in a term baby with respiratory distress, the main measures we take to reduce it is humidification. So the baby has uh, humidity coming through the nasal passage mainly the 50% of the humidification and heating happens in the nasal passage. If you have intubated a baby who is having breathing difficulty or bypassing that humidification mechanism, the gas that comes through uh, from the ventilator is very cold so we have to heat and humidify. The heat is basically to increase the ability to retain water vapor as we discussed in the earlier video on humidification the uh, water vapor content in the heated gas is more. So the relative humidity and absolute humidity difference which I explained earlier comes into play. So we have to uh, humidify, heated humidified gas is given through the ventilator circuit. It's the same on uh, non-invasive modes as well. You cannot give cold gas to breathe unless it's a low flow which is less than 2 liters. So anything more than 2 liters has to be heated and humidified. If you are just uh, humidifying through uh, the bu uh, gas bubbling through, uh, if it is not heated, it doesn't carry as much water vapor as it's needed. Remember that when you are humidifying, the humidification in the uh, invasive mode brings it to the airway temperature of 37 degrees and the ventilator circuit has the heater wire which maintains it up to the uh, airway. And we have the non-invasive modes where it's now set at 31 uh, degrees. And in a very small baby who is having hypothermia, we can use the uh, ventilator mode of the humidification for a brief time, but you can't continue on that because there is usually condensation in the circuit which makes it more difficult when the baby is on non-invasive mode. So this is for the ventilated patient. The skin care related humidification part we discussed in detail on the baby, uh, I mean in the premature baby with humidity, receiving the baby in the plastic bag, bringing them to the NICU in a, and putting them in a humidified incubator and the importance of maintaining the humidity and weaning it. So uh, prolonging the duration of humidity may delay the cornification of the skin so we have to start weaning as soon as the baby shows readiness for the same. So uh, I'm not going to repeat that again, I refer you to that video uh, earlier in the channel. Thank you for watching. Please share.